Hello and welcome to this introduction to Continuum Title Studio for Avid Media Composer. I'd like to add a lower third graphic to this clip, so I'll open the Effect Palette, open the Continuum 3D Objects group and drag Continuum Title Studio to the V1 track. Title Studio is applied with its default setup. As with all Continuum effects, I can get started quickly by opening the FX browser and choosing a preset. There's a wide range of graphics presets supplied with Title Studio. I'll select a lower third preset and audition it by scrubbing in the preset viewer. I'll hit the Advanced Mode button to open the Title Studio UI, where I can modify the preset. I'll select the main text track in the track view and edit its contents in the text tab in the controls window. Now I'll select the subtitle track and edit the text. I'll reposition the subtitle track with the on-screen controls in the preview window and hit the apply button to return to Avid. Now my modified preset is applied in the timeline. In the next example I'll build a graphic from scratch. I'll drag Title Studio to the filler layer in the timeline and hit the launch Title Studio UI button to open Title Studio. In the track window I'll select the default text track, edit the text, choose a font, set the size and switch to the materials tab in the controls window where I can select a material from my text from the preset library. Now I'll switch to the extrusion tab, change the bevel type to convex and increase the extrusion on my text. Next I'll adjust the position with the on-screen controls in the preview window. I'll select the scene in the track window now I can change the global settings for the scene. I'll go to the Render tab and enable 3D Rendering. Now I'm working in a 3D environment. In the Lights tab I'll change the mode of the scene light to shadow casting and adjust its position and spread angle. I'll hit the Add Media button in the Track view and select Image File to load a background image. I'll adjust its orientation in the Controls window. Once again I'll hit the Add Media button in the track view and select 3D Model to load an OBJ file. Assign a material and adjust its orientation with the on-screen controls. I'd like to add some depth of field so I'll select the scene in the track window and go to the camera tab to enable depth of field and edit the focal length, blur and lens effects. Now I'm ready to animate. The Auto Keyframe button is enabled, so when I change a parameter value, a keyframe is generated for that parameter. I'll set the initial light position. Now I'll go to the end frame for my animation and set the end position. I'll repeat these steps to set the start and end position for the camera. I'll scrub the timeline to preview and hit the apply button to exit from Title Studio. Now my graphic composition is rendered in the Avid timeline. Thanks for watching and be sure to follow Boris Effects on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with the latest information and training materials on Continuum, Sapphire, Mocha Pro and all the Boris Effects products.